the MVP Joel Embiid has finally made his return and he and the new look Sixers are looking like a team no top seed wants in the first round. The Sixers have ran off six straight wins, four of which were with Embiid. The Sixers had a new direction headed into this season and made some tweaks at the deadline as well. The role players in Philly finally fit Joel and the addition of Kyle Lowry in particular has opened up the game a lot more for not only Joel but also his co-star Tyrese Maxey. Speaking of Tyrese Maxey, in the last game he played, he dropped 52 willing the Sixers to a double overtime win in San Antonio. The Sixers are getting hot at the perfect time, and today I'll be going over why this Sixers team works, this recent hot streak, and how I feel about my team headed into the postseason. Before we get into this, if y'all could like the video, sub the channel, and hit that noti bell, I would really, really appreciate it. It would help me out a ton. And without further ado, let's get right into the video. I gotta start with the man of the hour, Joel Embiid. Game by game, we're seeing him return to form, and regardless, he has been great since his return. In four wins against the Thunder, Heat, Grizzlies, and Pistons, in just over 30 minutes a game, Joel Embiid is averaging 38-5 and five on 51-45-88 for a true shooting percentage of 65.5. Despite being unconditioned, Joel Embiid has still managed to score a point a minute since his return. While there has been some turnover issues, I'm not all that concerned. He was very visibly tired down the stretch in some of these games, and hopefully the two more regular season games plus a potential playing game can help him to get conditioned fully. The way things are looking right now and how well this team fits, not the talent, the fit, which I will discuss more later, I am expecting at least a great individual playoff run from a somewhat healthy Embiid. There's been some awful roster construction combined with month-to-month -month injuries, at times multiple, but time's up for his individual performance. He needs to at least have outstanding personal performance in these playoffs, regardless of how deep the Sixers go. My playoff expectations for the Sixers as a whole will get its own segment, but my expectations for Embiid are at least in and around his season averages of 35, 11, and 6. While pace does slow down in the playoffs, he should be able to get at least 33, 10, and 5, and this would satisfy me despite being under his gaudy season numbers. Tyrese Maxey has only played in three of these six wins, which to me makes the Sixers even more scary. If the Sixers can get it done with Joel in limited minutes and no Maxey, what can they do fully healthy with normal minutes? Despite this, in the games he did play, Maxey, for the most part, showed out. His three game stretch here is actually kind of funny as he had 37, 9, and 11 against Miami, then had a seven point stinker against Memphis, and then followed that up with 52, 5, and 7. This kind of resilience is something you love to see in someone who's getting at least 200 million this offseason. Also, Tyrese having these kinds of games headed into the playoffs is great. Pretty much no matter who we match up with, whether it's Boston or the Knicks or Cleveland, they all have great interior defense and answers for Embiid. Other guys are going to need to step up, and getting Maxi going headed into a playoff run where he will be crucial is huge. Even Milwaukee has Giannis and Brooks still, but in all honesty with how they're looking, Doc Rivers, I'd want them over anyone but Orlando probably, which is pretty crazy to say based on, you know, everything that was swirling before the season. I'm curious to see Tyrese Maxey in a playoff run as a main focus, but as we and I especially know, he's liable to have a huge game at any time. Maxey is going to be crucial in this playoff run, and I think he's up to the task. While we see Joel and Tyrese the most, Sixers fans have learned the in-between guys are really what makes it all work, and the right ones are finally here. Kelly Oubre, Nico Batum, and Kyle Lowry were all outstanding pickups that elevate this team, and guys like Buddy Heald and Campaign also fit great alongside Joel. Not really sure what order to do this in, but because it'll be quick since I just released a video on him, let's start with Kelly Oubre. Wing depth has been a major issue for the Sixers for a long time, and being able to get a guy who put up 20 a night last year on a minimum deal was huge. I love the low risk, high reward of this signing, and we're leaning towards the good side of that. Kelly provides a scoring punch and a ton of energy for this squad. If you want to hear more about Oubre, as I said, I just released a video on him, so be sure to go check that out. Now for one of the newer additions, Kyle Lowry. He has unlocked his team in ways I didn't greatly anticipate. I always liked the signing, but didn't know how much he had left in the tank. But being back home in Philly has rejuvenated Kyle, and he's playing great. His presence allows for Maxi to play off the ball where he really excels, and the chemistry with Joel is slowly but surely building. My main want for this team pre-deadline was another ball handler, and they got that. It really wouldn't shock me if Lowry is starting come playoff time, and I would welcome that. Lowry is also shooting over 40% from deep as a sixer, and will provide valuable minutes in the playoffs. Nico Batum is already one of my favorite Sixers role players ever. He is a huge connector and fits seamlessly alongside Joel Embiid. 
He struggled somewhat during Joel's absence, but I fully expect the 45% three-point shooter to return to form now that 21 is back. I always knew that Batum was a sniper, but looking at 45% is insane, especially considering that since the start of March, he's shooting just 33.3%. This might sound concerning, but legitimately everyone dips in three-point efficiency without Joel to an insane degree. Batum is nothing short of elite, and I hope he decides to both continue playing and continue playing here in Philadelphia. Buddy Heald was the Sixers' biggest deadline move, and despite a bit of a recent slump, I still love his fit on this roster. We all know Buddy is a sniper, and last night against Detroit, he finally showed out alongside Joel Embiid, dropping in five threes. Buddy had a bad few games during this win streak, so imagine what the Sixers could look like when they're totally clicking. His spacing will be extremely valuable come playoff time, and I'm excited to see if he can build off of last night and find that chemistry with Joel, because it could be scary if he does. Now for the conversation I've been dreading, Tobias Harris. For him to be effective, he needs post-ups, and posting him up with Joel Embiid on the court is borderline insane. I think in a bench role, he could be much more effective, and hopefully Nurse has the guts to follow through if he plays as he does. Opposing fans have this perfect jack-of-all-trades third-slash-fourth option theory about Tobias that just couldn't be further from the truth. He's the jack-of-all-trades master of nothing. His fit with Joel is awful, his contract is awful, and I will be making things awful should he be re-signed. A trade that greatly upset me for vibe reasons was the Pat Bev trade, but I will say campaign is certainly a better basketball fit. He's a volume three-point shooter, and while I don't know how key he'll be come playoff time, he'll definitely have a solid role. He chucks a bit at times, but at the same time, he as well as Buddy and Kyle all have to relearn the team with Joel. Pat Bev leaving Philly hurt my soul, but we did get a better fit in return. DeAnthony Melton just came back from injury last night, and I honestly don't know what to think. I feel like any of Lowry, Melton, or Buddy could be starting next to Tyrese come playoff time. Melton is a shooter and defender, but I honestly like the Lowry and Buddy fits better. However, Melton Healthy will have a sizable role should he play decent here. Ricky Council IV needs to be signed to a long-term deal immediately. I don't know how much he'll play, if at all, during the playoffs, but I just need to say this. He's as savvy as an NBA veteran and has real potential in this league. KJ Martin and Jeff Doughton have both shown flashes recently, but I highly doubt we see any of them in slightly important playoff minutes. However, they are two potential future rotation players. Last, but certainly not least, we have Paul Reed. He is the most competent backup center of the Embiid era and a Philly favorite. He and Joel Embiid are the only Sixers under contract for the next season, and I think he'll be backing up Joel for a while. I'm really hoping we can at least not lose the non-Embiid minutes as much as we have in the past these playoffs, because if so, a big run could be in the cards. To wrap this up, let's talk about my playoff expectations for this team. Considering Embiid is somewhat healthy, a loss to anyone but the Celtics and Knicks is unacceptable. I can't say I'd take us over Boston because of how ridiculous they are, but at the same time, I thought the series last year would be five games. As for the Knicks, I think that would be a seven game series, but that team, even without Julius Randle, could give anyone a run for their money. The bright side is that should he remain healthy, the Sixers will have the best player in any Eastern Conference series. I don't want to say a specific round because if we get the eight and lose to Boston, I wouldn't be surprised. But should we not see Boston until then, I'm expecting a conference finals with Embiid healthy. But I can see it right now that it'll be a game seven heartbreak to the Knicks in the second round because I see the future. Basically, if we lose to Boston or New York, I won't be surprised. That's going to wrap this one up. If you enjoyed it, please like it up, sub the channel, and hit that noti bell. It would help me out a ton. Comment down below. What do you think about the Sixers team right now? What are your expectations of them going into the playoffs? Again, you know, I, I Milwaukee, like... Milwaukee's a 500 team since they got Doc Rivers. Giannis just went down also, uh, and he's out for the rest of the regular season. We don't know what he's going to be looking like, but even if the, even if he was healthy, I felt fine about that. Uh, Cleveland, like Cleveland poses some things, but Donovan Mitchell's hurt. Again, like, you know, it's Boston and the Knicks for me. That, that's really it. I'd love to play Orlando first round. I'd love to, as I said, I'd, I you know, Orlando and Milwaukee would be the two teams I want the most. Uh, then I'd probably say, you know, I, I mean, it's, it, and then it's just Cleveland and Boston, uh, uh, you know, in the Knicks, but yeah, I actually, we're probably not gonna be able to play the Knicks, but I, I don't know, man, the Eastern Conference standings right now are, are like getting crazy, like kind of like how the West were, but not, you know, with the amount of wins, but how close it is, but yeah, that's gonna wrap this one up. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.